Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we are going to begin to test containers and ready. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. Test containers. If you haven't, um, yeah, if you haven't heard about it before, then it is a cool uh, library, a cool framework where you can actually start up a container with some dependency that you need to, to run your tests. Like it could be Redis, it could be in RabbitMQ. Uh, in the last video, I showed you Kafka, um, or some videos ago, I showed you Kafka. Uh, in this video, we're going to going to, to go for the Redis for the Redis container, and here we're going to use the generic container because. Um, because uh, that, there's actually a lot of modules. There's actually a lot of um, we actually have a lot of test container modules where we get some specific uh, some specific implementation. For instance, for Kafka, then we had suddenly had a handle where we could get the Bootstrap servers that we needed the last time. But this time we we want the we want Redis and Redis uses just the generic uh, just the, the generic uh, test container. And with that uh, with that we can we get the the common stuff like we can get the common stuff like the port because test container spins up your the, the dependency for instance uh, ready server and then it uh, exposes the port that we choose to uh, to expose and then we, we, with Redis it's uh, 6379 that is the default Redis port and then it will be exposed to your local host to a random port so you never know which port it's going to run on uh, and that means that you have to configure uh, if you if you have a spring application uh, it doesn't matter what application you have but you have to configure your application with exactly that port so Let's get started. Let's see the magic. Let's see the codes. Um, so, in my situation right here, I have a rest. I have a, a ship rest controller right here, where I want to, where I want to be able to create a new ship like this. So this means that my rest controller, if I go to space, and then just forward slash, then I then I can actually. Yeah, then, then of course I, I need to apply a captain name in the in the body of my HTTP message. Then um, then I want to save that spaceship in my Redis cache. That is the situation I I kind of set up right here. And uh, the key used for that is ships, and the cache that we use is also named ships. Of course, we could have used another key. We could have used a constant instead. So actually, let us do that. We could we could just have the constant right here. Oh, let us just have it right here. Public static um, string cash cash name cash name like this equal to and then we can call it something uh, ship cash something like this and then we could replace this with cash name and this with cash name right here. Because of course we are, we can create these spaceships and put them into the cache. And to begin with, uh, the, there would actually be no list. We will actually get a null value back, and then uh, then we will have to create that that list that we uh, put into the key value database. Redis, if you don't know it, is just an as, uh, in a, an awesome uh, awesome database key value database. It's also called a NoSQL database because it just has keys and it has values. You can store objects in um, as a value. You can store uh, arrays, lists as a, as, as, a, as a value. You can also store just strings and integers and yeah, numbers, uh, etc., dates in, into the cache. The, the cool thing about this cache is that you can actually have a time to live on each on each uh, key value pair. So you the so it's perfect for caches because then at some point you want your your data to time out and then you can then fill up your cache with some refreshed data. Uh, so that that is the time to live uh, parameter that is. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that can be set to, to uh, on on each key value item uh, and to your cache uh, globally also. Uh, so, so it's just a key value. So it's just a key value store actually. So um, so that this means that when we have a key named ships right here, then we need to set the value which is an array list to begin with, and then we add. And we add a spaceship right here. I'm using the builder pattern so that, that I'm, I'm calling spaceship builder fuel left 88%. The model of my spaceship is round, and the captain then takes the name uh, of whatever we are going to post to this rest controller right here. And then we, uh, yeah, then we're building the spaceship, and we are then adding it to the list, and then we put it into the cache. So this is actually the most important part right here. Of course, I should also replace this with a with a, with a constant, but I'm not going to do that right now. 
Um, then we have the get mapping right here. So this means that we have the request mapping with space, and then we have the get mapping right here. That, that means that we, if we write forward slash space, forward slash all, then I would actually get a list of all of my spaceships right here. If there are any, that can, I could also get an alter returned if, if I haven't stored any spaceships left. And it's quite easy with the cache, the cache manager right here. The cache manager with the cache manager, I can get a um, I can get a, a key value uh, a item, and then I can actually. Um, yeah, first I can get a cache, then I can get my yeah. value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I and then I can get my ships out like this, and then I can return them as uh, JSON uh, just by returning it right here. That is JSON that will do that automatically. So that is all of the code. My ship right is right here. I have the captain right here, the model, the fuel left right here. That is awesome. Uh, so there's only three fields. That's okay. I have my builder right here. I'm setting no ice constructor and all ice constructor. Then I can serialize them easily and also convert it into JSON very easily. Also, uh, sorry, into uh, JSON uh, very easily. Also, and I can also persist them uh, very easy to uh, and retrieve them from the database if I wanted to to do, uh, persist them to a JPA database at some point uh, or relational database. Then of course I could do that also. So enough talk about the codes. Let us look at the ready this configuration because we need to configure the Redis yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yes, and then um, here I have this profile on top. This because I want uh, only this code to, uh, to be enabled when I have enabled the profile uh, Redis right here. I'm creating a bean. This is where the magic lies. So I'm configuring a default cache with, uh, with default configuration settings. Then I have my entry time to live right here of minutes. That's a bit long. I just want my cache to store the values maybe 10 minutes. And I do not, don't want it to store uh, null values. And I want to use the default generic JSON serializer whenever I have an object and it will be actually be serialized as JSON instead. That is what I choose right here. So, um, so was that? I think that's it. Now we can look at the tests. So that was my Spring application, and I've I've created this application, this whole project by pressing File New Project right here. Spring Initializer. I chose Maven uh, compliance with uh, seventeen, JDK nineteen. Then I ticked off Lumbug. I ticked off test containers. Test containers is also some that that's right there. Then I ticked off uh, Redis, uh, Redis, and I also ticked off Web. There's some Redis somewhere. That it's right there, uh, and uh, yeah, and then there's also web, which is also ticked off, which is right there. Then I press create, and then I ended up with this whole project right here. Quite cool, yes, it is. Because now we let us look at the test. Because in, uh, to run this test, I need a running Redis instance. Of course, I could also run Redis embedded into my application, but the problem with that is then, then I could not scale my application, and then suddenly the more things you, the more stuff you embed into your application, the heavier it actually becomes. So it's, it's I would say it's a good thing uh, not to embed uh, something like Redis into your application. I would definitely run it as something separately, so then I can scale it um, independently uh, of, of this application right here. I can also choose to share Redis cache with other between applications if I want to. Um, but yeah, but actually I would not do that either. I would actually just I just want the scaling actually. That's why I, I don't want to enable the um, the, 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 the embedment of uh, the Redis. So, but uh, here we have some code right here. This is the this this is the default this is the default code. If you go look at the if you go look at the Java example, but this cannot be used because if you run a container like this, then it will uh, it will it will spin up your Redis container when you are after you have started your your Spring context, and then uh, and then you would actually not know which port it runs on because it will take it in it will take a, a random it will take a random port. Uh, actually, so it will expose this port right here. It will expose it to a random port uh, that you will have to set up, set your Spring application to start with. This means that it needs to be known before you start your Spring uh, context and, and your Tomcat application. Okay, so how do we do that then, Mike? So we we uh, we uh, we have to declare the static static generic uh, container like this. And then we say Redis, and again, this is static, and this is before all. And here we say 
Redis, and then we say generic container, and then we just call this the Docker image name right here. When we don't give any tag, then it will actually uh, be inferred to latest instead. Uh, but I'll, I'll just skip that. Uh, and then I want to run with exposed port 6379, because that is the default Redis port that is being used. Then I start up my Redis right here. And then I write out some, something in the, in the log, so we can see that now we started. And here we are setting a system property, because when we set these system properties, we could also use something called dynamic uh, properties. Uh, I'll show that in just a minute. There's a code example, uh, actually, on testscontainers.org. Um, if you follow their code examples, then you, you can see how to do that. But you can also do it like this. We set the system properties right here. So we say get the map ports, this is the original port, and then yeah, convert it to string if that's not needed, it will be automatically, yeah, we, we could, uh, it's okay. So, and then we have the host right here, that is local host right now, and this port right here is something, a random number, and of course we could, uh, and we are printing it out actually, out to the console right here. Uh, and so that's that's actually it. So this is before all, so this means this is before our test actually starts. After all, stop Redis, and then it actually stops uh, uh, the Redis test containers. We do not need this actually, because um, the test containers is actually so smart that it will do this uh, by itself. Um, because it actually runs inside the, the JVM, so that's actually why. So when the JVM uh, is, is about to, to stop, then the test containers will actually stop. Uh, the test container is also a container that will actually spin up. So we will get two containers, the test containers container, and then we will get the uh, Redis container also. So And the, the test containers container will manage our Redis container. So that is how it works. And then we have the test down here. It's quite a simple test. We just say, first of all, give us all of the ships. And then we will say that the first count equal to zero. And if the, all ships were not null, uh, then it give us the size as the first count. And then we create two uh, ships, one named Mike, one named Susan, and then we return all the ships once again. And then we will actually say that the second count should uh, be two larger than the first count because we just created two spaceships. And then I end up with actually, um, with actually printing them all out in the um, in the console. So. I just press play. Let us see what happens now. Uh, there's a lot of output going on before the context started. Did you see that? Okay, now we got an error. Um, and then, let me just check right here. Yeah, I know why. This is because I said that we need the profile, active profile, active profiles, and we need the Redis profile right here because or else my Redis configuration will not be activated. Um, the reason why I do this is because I have multiple scenarios in this one project right here. I have both Kafka and Redis. So yeah, and now it's actually green and we get two spaceships, Captain, uh, Mike, Captain Susan, and with this, the, yeah, with the same, uh, yeah, it's round, and the fuel left is eighty-eight percent. That's quite good. So, why do I keep this code right here? I do not know. Let me just delete it. It's just to remember not to use it. Uh, uh, yeah. So that was one way to set this up and uh, to actually see it works. Uh, before I will show you the other way. Let us just look at services, because here you can see my containers. Right now, I, have, uh, I don't have any Docker containers running. What happens if I start my test? Do you think? Yes, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I'll go to services right away. So here I got my test container. So this is the test container that controls everything. And here I got my Redis. Oh, here I got my Redis uh, that comes with some warnings. That's OK. It's just for, for testing. So now my Redis container stopped. And now my test container um, container stopped. So that's, that's uh, quite awesome, right? It cleans up after itself. That's quite awesome. Um, what else was it that we wanted to do? I would actually like to see some outputs. Um, let us see some outputs. Um, let's just. Look. I want to see the which port that it actually shows because it's a random port every time. So, if we search for this, the local map port this is my text right here. So, if we search for this, and then we, then we can see, look, this is a real port. So that is the uh, yeah this port right here that is inside the Redis container. It has been mapped randomly to fifty six thousand and forty nine. So that was the port that was used in this situation. If I run again, then we will get another port. Let us just do that just for fun. So test containers once again and research. This time it was another port fifty six zero six four. It uh, it probably likes these uh, high numbers because there's uh, very few things that you uh, that uses this these ports up in this range right here. Um, yeah. So
So, I promised you another way of, um, of wiring this up. And here's that way. That's uh, we can actually use the we can use dynamic property source like this, and we can actually um, yeah we can configure a test like that. There's one way to do it where we actually use dynamic property source. This is an abstract class, just so you know. So this is an abstract class. You do not need to create an abstract class to make this work. You could actually just use dynamic property source. What will this do? This is actually um, a built-in uh, Spring annotation that you can use if you want to change. Uh, some of the properties after your application has actually started, then you can actually change your um, your, your properties with this by annotating with this annotate the dynamic property source. And what will then happen? It will actually it will actually refer to a method. This is a method reference. This means that every time that something uh, requests the host or the port, then this method right here is being called. So it's not a static value as you uh, as you're used to. Um, so this then this, this method right here will be called, and this, since this is the test container's uh, method to actually get the map port, then you will actually get the real mapped port from the for that that needs to be used. So that is uh, this looks a bit more elegant. I know that it's just because uh, why did I choose the other um, way then? Just because it's also possible to uh, to yeah to to, to do other things that I, uh, that you showed there with the uh, before all and then the static. You can also have just have static code actually. So you can you can create a static block. And then you can run the code that I had with the system properties right here. Um, or you can choose this dynamic property source. This is probably a bit nicer to look at, actually. Um, I think if I would create a third one, I would actually create it with this, uh, yeah, with, with this style right here. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you very much for all of your uh, comments. What else can I say? The code is on GitHub as usual. Have a great evening. Hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.